Good day, students. So welcome to part seven of our Algebra 2 Trig and Regents Review for January 2014. In this installment, we're going to be going over problems 31 to 33. All right, let's take a look at problem 31. It says, um, determine algebraically the x coordinate of the of all points where the graphs of x, y equals 10 and y equals x plus 3 intersect. All right, so you can look at this as a system um, of equations. This is a rational equation and this is a linear equation. So the line is basically going to intersect that rational function at two points. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, write down our equations. We have xy equals 10. I'm going to call this equation 1. And then um, y is equal to x plus 3. Call this equation 2. All right, now, um, since one variable is already solved for here, we can use a substitution method to, to solve this equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, substitute, um, substitute x plus 3 for y in equation 1. All right, so this x plus 3, I'm going to replace y with it in equation 1. So equation 1 is now going to become x, instead of x times y, it's going to be x times uh, x plus 3, that's the value of y in equation 2, equals 10. Okay, now we have a quadratic equation. Uh, in order to solve it by factoring and zero product property, we have to write it in standard form. Okay, so let's expand this. Distribute x to these two quantities right here, the two, the two terms in a quantity, which yields x squared plus 3x equals 10. To put this in standard form, it must be equal to 0, so subtract 10 from both sides. We have x squared plus 3x minus 10 is equal to 0. All right, so let's factor this um, expression right here. So we go, are going to use the x game. ac goes on top. a, b, c. a is 1, b is 3, and c is negative 10. So ac is negative 10, b is 3. What two numbers multiply to give you 10 and add to give you 5? I mean, add to give you 3. So there's a variation of 5 and 2. So 5 times 2 is 10. So if the sum should be positive, that means the smaller number is negative. Okay? So the factored form of this expression is going to be x plus 5. You take the first number, plus 5. And then x minus 2, the second number there, um, equals 0. Okay? So this is where a lot of people make mistakes. Um, they say, oh, okay, since it's already factored, our answers are going to be positive 5 and negative 2. Well, that's inaccurate. Um, we're, we still have to continue solving. Um, to finish this up, we're going to use something called the zero product property, okay? So um, if the product of two numbers is zero, one or the other has to be zero. So x plus 5 is going to be set to zero and x minus 2 is going to be set to 0. All right, so if we solve this for 5, subtract 5 from both sides, you have x equals negative 5, and then add 2 to both sides, you have x equals 2. So the x coordinates of the points where these two functions intersect are negative 5 and 2. Okay, so please do not forget to set each quantity to 0 and solve um, do not stop prematurely at this factor of piece right here, which many people tend to do. Okay, let's move on to problem 32. We're to solve a an absolute value inequality algebraically for x. Okay, so when you're dealing with absolute value inequalities, you really have to uh, closely examine the inequality you're dealing with. This is a less than. Whenever you're dealing with a less than absolute value inequality, you're bounded between two values. Okay, you're within an interval. So in this situation, you're within an interval from uh, negative 13 to positive 13, okay? You're within this interval right here, whatever the solution uh, set is. So you're kind of sandwiched, okay? You're sandwiched between this interval. Now, how do we represent that sandwich situation using absolute value inequalities? Well, since you sandwich between this number and its opposite, we can write this absolute value inequality, the absolute value of negative 4x plus 5, 
is less than 13 as a sandwich inequality. So we're going to have negative 13 as less than this argument or absolute value argument, negative 4x plus 5. And that is less than 13. So this is two equations in one, okay? We're going to solve them simultaneously. We're going to solve two equations simultaneously. The goal is to get x isolated in the middle. So what we're going to do is get rid of the 5 first. We're going to subtract 5 from three, all three sides of our inequality. That yields negative 18 is less than negative 4x as less than um, 8. Now one thing you want to note is that when you're, it's only when you have less than or less than or equal to, those are the only situations where you can solve using the sandwiched approach. If it were greater than, then you must solve them independently because you're going to have um, open-ended intervals. All right. So now that we have this situation, we're going to solve for x. So to solve for x, we need to get rid of this negative 4. So we divide everything by negative 4, all three sides of our, our inequality. All right. So the difference between solving equations and inequalities has to do with what? The main difference is the inversion of the um, orientation of the inequality whenever you divide by a negative number. It's as though you're reflecting your number line. So anytime you're solving an inequality, you have to be really careful with dividing negative numbers, okay? So now that we've divided by a negative, all our inequalities must switch, okay? So this um, becomes positive nine over two, divide top and bottom by two, this less than becomes greater, and then you have x in the middle, and this less than becomes greater, and then uh, 8 over neg negative 4 is negative 2, okay? So if we reorder it, we can write this as negative 2 is less than x, and x is less than 9 over 2 in decimal form is 4.5. So there goes your answer uh, to problem 32. All right, let's take a look at the last problem in this installment. For problem 33, we have to express 4xi plus 5yi to the 8 plus 6xi to the 3rd plus 2yi to the 4th in simplest a plus bi form. So if you take a look at the a plus bi form, you notice that there is not, there isn't any i with a power greater than 1. Whereas in this problem, we have um, i with powers greater than 1. So simplification involves making sure that i does not have a power greater than 1. If it does, that um, term should be reduced. So the question is, how do we reduce it? Well, if you have i, you're fine. i is legal. i is just i. Remember, i is equal to negative 1. I mean, I'm sorry, the square root of negative 1. This is where, how i was invented. It's just a nicer way of writing the square root of negative 1. Now you have i square. I square involves squaring uh, negative one. Okay, so if you square negative one, you end up with negative one, right? So I square reduces to negative one. Remember, I can remain as I, but if the power goes higher than one, then you have to reduce it. So I square reduces to negative one. I to the third is just the product of these two, right? So I times negative one is negative I, and then I to the fourth, is i squared times itself, okay? i squared times itself or i times i to the third. Whichever way you do it, you're going to end up with positive one. Now, if you, if you have these four memorized, i negative one, negative i, and one, um, you're good to go, okay? So you see a pattern here. You have i and negative i, negative one and one. So um, why do, what do I mean that you're good to go? Well, this pattern is cyclical, okay? So no matter what number of power you have, um, it, it's going to generate one of these responses. So um, to generate the cyclical nature of this, you just have to count, so go right back. So this is 4, so 5 is going to fall right here. This is i to the 5th, this is i to the 6th, this is i to the 7th, and this is i to the 8th. So i to the 8th is 1, i to the 7th is negative i. Guess what? We can cycle again i to the, so this is 8, start at 9, 
this is 10, this is 11, and this is 12. Okay, so you can go on and on and just make a long list like that. In this, so in this problem, the only ones we actually need are um, i to the eighth, i to the third, and i to the fourth. Okay, so we're going to be using i to the third here. And i to the eighth and i to the fourth uh, are just fall in the same row, so they're basically the same, the same thing. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and simplify this expression. We're going to have... Um, 4 x i. Now the power of i here is 1, so you leave it alone. 5 y i to the 8th is 1, as we can see here. i to the 8th is 1. So instead of i to the 8th, that we'll, we'll replace that with 1 plus 6 x. What is i to the 3rd? i to the 3rd is negative i. All right. Plus 2 y. i to the 4th must be reduced since the power is greater than 1. I to the fourth is one also. Okay, so times one. Let's go ahead and simplify that. We have five, I mean four xi plus five y minus six xi plus two y. Okay. So since it's a plus bi form, basically the real part comes first and then the um, imaginary part comes next. The terms with the I um, associated, uh, connected with them are the imaginary pieces, so they will put them together. So these are the imaginary parts. They go second, okay, and then the root parts um, go together. So we're going to combine these two first. These are my A, so it's going to be 7Y. And then if I combine my imaginary parts, 4 minus 6 is negative 2XI. All right, so this is um, this expression in its simplest A plus BI form. So that's that. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. And feel free to subscribe to our channel so you can get updates for the cool clips such as this. Please post a comment to let us know what you think about this clip. Uh, and do give us a thumbs up if you liked it. We really appreciate it. More clips can be found on mapgoodserve.com slash testprep. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.